Good morning guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm in, uh, in a property in Tweedle. If you're for around Medway, you know where this is. It's like very close to the Medway times we are working. I, I don't like working too, too far. So today we have this extension where it's gonna be like a, become like a playroom and it's gonna have a, a, a pool table here in the middle and we're supposed to have a, a, a pool, a pool a, I don't know how they call it, like a snooker light hanging above here which after two weeks uh, the company that was supplying it they didn't send it yet and probably will arrive tomorrow so I have to come in a couple of days to fit this light but what are we gonna have? we're gonna have two two spotlights here and another two over here so the two ends of the of the room and both of them so we're gonna have over here i'll replace this switch fuse pair with an unswitched and you're gonna stick a, a two gang gang two gang uh, kinetic switch this is it's a drain, so we can't really go through it. And obviously, no one wants drinking in a in a room nice like this. And the ceiling is, you know, it's curved. Uh, the way I'm gonna mark my down lights is I'm gonna set my laser. I'm gonna mark it down to the floor. Take my measurement down to the floor, and then with the laser. I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna project that on, on the ceiling and mark it this way. Let's see how it happens. Okay, now, okay, now I have my one of my markings here and over the other side put my pencil there. It's bad enough to try to make a to line the two marks. On the on the blue tile is is even less visible. Uh, and this, uh, let me take those blinds down. Oh, you're much better now. I can see my my laser line. Uh, uh, oh, looks a joy. And of course, it's not visible enough. <sighs> what I'm going to do with that? It's not dark enough. Okay. And also, I think we far too to the center yeah. I have to be here okay that makes my life even that easier because I have just to line the on the grout and perfect match okay I don't know if you can see the laser line. So we're somewhere here where my initial one was over here was coming. The two of them, they would come too close. So I think now we, 
are much better. So I have to what we can to do. So what I'm going to do now what I'm going to do now is a hull. So this is about because I have got a second laser and I need to do the same thing with line them I in this this way. So I draw a line with my pencil on on the laser line. I will mark the other ones over there and do it the other way around as well. Okay, what I did instead, so because that came a little bit to the end, I measure it and to be about the same uh, distance from both sides of the wall and then I'll, I'll measure the distance between them so it's 120 so I'm gonna do the same thing from that side and then I'll move my laser uh, to, do, to do it from that way to here so effectively I'm gonna mark this length and then I'll take a, a measurement from here to there and mark my mark those ones and before I do the last stage I'll, I'll check with, with the owner if they're happy with the position so I won't be doing this measurement twice because it's a bit long Good tip when you're marking surfaces that are already plastered and need to be decorated, use a pencil, not a sharpie, because the sharpie is a lot harder to be covered with the paint and it's a permanent. With the pencil, we can even wipe it out, but it's, even if you paint the paint directly, it's a lot easier to, you know. <laughs> To, to be covered with paint. Also, that is our center for the light. So we correspond this and cut a, a 57 mil hole somewhere here and fix this cable back there. And I have my my kinetic receiver connected there. And now I'll take a, a rough measurement here to see where roughly I want it to be. So this is, let's say, 900 from this surface and to the wall we have a 200 so I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna measure, so that's an easy way to, to do things. So I'm gonna measure 700 from here and that brings me one mark here and one that's an easy way to this is an easy way to mark it because of say with the curved ends it will be a bit it, it can be a little bit of a pain like this way, then I can project that on the ceiling. And I just find out that the last five, ten minutes of the video, my microphone was off. So I need to re record it now. But, so this is what I've done right now. So I cut this 100 mil hole because it was an, uh, a joist here, which I went a bit off. I didn't realize, but there was a space on the top of the joist, but my rod was finding in a, in a kind of rafter on the actual roof. 
so still able to fix the cables and use this hole so that my two down lights and this is where the the new light is going to be so I only have to to grab this one and fix it through that hole and you can see it joist and there's another one over there so in this occasion with this one I might be luckier and I won't have to cut an access hole so let's see what is going to happen but our luck is going to be okay can I put that the rods and uh, if you fishing cables with rods I don't know if you're not doing it already I stuck I have insulation stuck on my throat and I always do the same mistake I have to do those small bits and I, I don't get my mask Ugh. thinking it's only gonna take five minutes That would be a lot easier if I have Frank with me, but he left me alone and he went camping with his family. Instead of staying here and suffer with me. Yeah, I think we have to cut an access hole, a hundred mil hole, somewhere here, halfway and then we'll fish the cables uh, on both sides so from here to here from the hole to here and then to back to the down lights because there's not a lot of space and as I'm pushing, pushing the, the rods in I found it stacks on the roof this is gonna take ages I'd rather cut a hole and then Fill it, fill it. So let's see. So here will be fine, I think. I think I should go and get my mask for this part. And behold. Bane. Sounds like sound like the Darth Vader. Darth Vader was an electrician. He never, he, managed, he never managed to become a fully qualified though, he remained an apprentice all of his life. Master. Look, I have your father.
My very first job was a, I think I might have mentioned it before, it was a family friend. Uh, it was a dry liner. So that was my introduction to the building industry. And to be honest, the skills I've got there from that job, they come quite handy. My work as an electrician. Those things I can I can make them go to a satisfactory uh, level. Obviously, I'm not going to too excessive on making it good. I'm making quite a decent making up and then. A decorator can do the final touches. At least I know I could. I could fix things if needed. Okay, for the time being, I have connected this temporarily. I need to, um, this one, I need to wiggle. Stick a wiggle here. So this is because uh, it's a dual channel uh, receiver. It only needs a line in neutral permanent and then two switch lights. So I use those two twin inerts and I pulled out the, the CPC because it's, uh, it, it doesn't need an earth. So I fed with this one, I gave the supply and then two switch lines back here. So this is going to be connected to the, the pendant. Uh, for the time being, leave it like this. And I'm going to put like a, a chuck box probably. I haven't got any wiggle boxes. And I'll just put in, start putting the down lights up because it's, it's already a lot of time passed. And I can move on to the next job inside the house.
I was just outside popping in the van. Just saw another electrician's van. Uh, I mean, he's not, I don't think he lives around here. Uh, quite, I was thinking, because I've been, you know, I'm going to jobs and apparently the train, choo -choo, so apparently there's an electrician living like three doors down and there I am doing jobs in next door to them and, and I mean they, they have like branded vans they're not just you know that no one knows that they're there same thing happened to to me as I seen you know other other electricians vans going around and doing jobs to my neighbors and I just I don't I don't understand why people that don't give an opportunity to the next door neighbor to quote for a job. And I don't mean that, you know, sometimes people, they have their own, their own tradesmen that they, they trust and work with them for some time now. But in my case, it was, you know, I was doing jobs for first time clients. And from what I know, those electricians are not too bad. I'll leave this like this, just to fill that up, and when it dries, we're gonna push it back. The two street spare were going to change this to an unswitched one for the lights, and then because this one was also put uh, in the bin. Now. The, the fuse, I tried to pull the fuse out and it was, it broke. So I decided to change this one to an unswitched as well. Because there's no, apart from if you want to do a job, there's no other reason to isolate that part. And it's obviously still need to be fused. Well, because a, a, a large spare, like a, it has more than one socket. But what was I opened it? What I saw it was so it was this pair with a 13 amp fuse feeding the sockets, but then it was feeding this one as well. So from the out, so if you switch this, if you switch this switch, if you switch that off, that switch that spare as well, which didn't make much sense. You have two 13 amp uh, fuses, so. What I did now, what I'm doing, I, I connect the supply for this one directly to, to, the, to the in. So if you pull the fuse out for the sockets, the lights will be still, the light will be still working. It makes a lot more sense, isn't it? And I mean, to be honest, you may as well have all of them in a in one sweet spare because you have the, the 13 amp fuse, which can which you will use both if you if you're sparing off. 1.5 cable or, or a or a, or a spare for socket with more than one of them isn't it technically it will be just fine with one and I would connect I would install it and unswitch No, I mean, yeah, if you have them both, then you could put this, you know, maybe put a switch here for to control the light. And 
That would be nice if the boxes were aligned. Yeah. You can't have everything in this world, so let me... Okay, now, in order to pair those dual channel uh, receivers, uh, the first channel you do it as normal, press and hold for three seconds until the red LED start blinking. Press the switch, and now it's paired. And now the lights are working. And now to pair the second channel, you have to uh, press the switch quickly twice, and the the blue light, the blue LED light comes on. Press and hold for three seconds. And now the other switch is paired, which is this one. It's gonna be for the pendant. So I'm gonna use the double side tapes to stick it on the wall and tidy up a little bit, uh, seal the ceiling, and then go inside, which I won't be able to do in the recording because they're working, but I may do like a, a, a video on my phone without the sound because Apparently they have three switches without back boxes, so they just break the wall and and they just fit stick the socket the the switch mounted with uh, wood screws on the on the wall. Ingenious. They use this polyfiller for those kind of jobs. It's quite really good thing, nice thing to have in your van doesn't need any mixing and if the patch is not too big with a little bit of sanding after it dries you can paint it straight away so it doesn't need much this one is because it's a little bit big second coat but it'll be safe with a little bit of good sanding and you will be to be painted straight away. Okay that's done here. So you can see I patched it quite well isn't it for an electrician. Uh, I'm gonna go inside and the next thing you will do will be in a couple of couple of days time where I'll come to fit the light in the middle.